Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the After Maghrib podcast. It's it's amazing being a host on this amazing, amazing platform. I know I said amazing so much times, but that's how amazing this podcast is. Alhamdulillah. I believe. And uh, more amazingly, is having a beautiful, amazing co-host, <laughs> Brother Ahmed Gokul. It's a Salam pleasure bro. to see you again. Assalamu alaikum. Doing? Good to have you good here. To have you good to be here as well. Alhamdulillah. How's your week been? Wallah, alhamdulillah, can't complain. It was my daughter's birthday just Mashallah. yesterday. Mashallah. Today's the 1st of July, so the date of recording. Yeah. So yesterday being the 30th of June was my daughter's fifth birthday. Mashallah. So. And for those who don't know, you have two. Two daughters. Two daughters. And how has the last, what, five years? She's, she's now five years old, right? She's five. She, your life is, must be so, so, so crazy. My life is, ex- is exactly as how I imagine. Alhamdulillah. 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 Is it is it fun at home being a dad? It's exciting because every day is like a different day. Yeah. So every day has got its own unique challenges. Best, it's it's all exciting. Alhamdulillah. 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 What good. about yourself? Uh, to, to I asked you like eight questions. How's your week? <laughs> <laughs> My week's been good. Alhamdulillah. Uh, work is work, so work has been busy, and yeah, it's been it's been things have been active. Alhamdulillah. Things are picking up as well in the community, which is good to see more initiatives more program more content from Ahmed Bay TV and obviously from from after Maghrib so alhamdulillah things have been good last week for those who don't know we had a really interesting discussion and we talked about the concept mm. of Shia celebrities and, and Shia celebrity status what it is where it came from does it exist is it bad what are the role models like are they good so that whole discussion is really intriguing we've had some uh, all sorts of of, of um, very varied feedback alhamdulillah about that discussion so check it out do not miss out on that conversation and if you are new to the podcast give us a subscription subscribe to the channel on youtube or if you're following on spotify or apple Podcasts or wherever you are listening to follow us and obviously a five star rating would always yeah five star always rating go a long but way I, but i think what's more important is that i want to hear from them directly yeah as in so that if they can maybe contact the team after maghrib yeah, yeah. or you know slide in the dms of after maghrib follow us on instagram that's the only and time you can slide in dms <laughs> brothers, sisters. slide into i after said maghrib. slide in dms because it's all related to this today today's <laughs> topic so uh, <laughs> correct correct best please we'd love to hear your feedback and inshallah we can learn on how to improve because i don't know if people are bored of me best i hope you're not bored no, of me no, Ahmed. not at all i I think this has been uh, so far obviously been really exciting very interesting and to be honest say the topic today mm. which we want to talk about is something which again we always talk about sometimes we uh, think think about it in, in every action we do in uh, you know sometimes when we go out or we um, appear somewhere like for example on, on, a, on, a, on a channel like this or somewhere else but the concept of social hijab mm. is a discussion we want to talk about but more kind of further than that as well not just social hijab but a new phrase which i don't know if we're coining it for the first time but digital hijab digital hijab digital hijab being the evolution of social hijab so it's a big topic it is it's a big topic indeed and i i i think whoever's listening to this i'm assuming everyone's ages are you know sort of i think just you know maybe 18 19 going all the way to about 30s i would say yeah um, so I think it's a topic that's interesting, not just for me being thirty as well. I have to say I'm thirty. I, I wouldn't uh, believe it was that my either. birthday uh, on the sixth of June. <laughs> How do you say? Kul am wa antu bi khair. Kul am wa antu bi khair. Antu bi khair. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I need, it's my my uh, one of my in-laws' birthdays coming up. So good yeah. luck. Don't forget the dates. I hope they're not listening. To Don't this. forget <laughs> the dates. <laughs> no. Very important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I say it's interesting because it's 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 something that everyone relates to, and I think even when yeah. we were younger. So I think social hijab was very different to where it is today. 100%. And the fact you mentioned the word has become digital. Yeah. That means things have moved forward very quickly. Yeah, I think it has, to be honest. We live obviously in like a postmodernist um, uh, world now and everything is very globalized. Everything is very technological. When we were growing up, the first, what was the first phone you had, say? A Nokia? I had... I can remember the model. I think it was yeah. 3210. Yeah, there you go. I still only play Snake on Snake. it, by the way. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, I think that's <laughs> you and I both. And obviously now, the generation growing up is 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 kind of dealing with completely new var- variances of technology. Mm. And not, it's not just about the phone. It's what you can access through a phone. Um, and not just your phone, of course, but digital hijab is, is coming now in all sorts of uh, varied contexts. Um, and we're even having to talk. Who would have thought 
that even on a Zoom call, we're, con we're, we're considering hijab. And obviously with the mm. pandemic and working from home, the concept of hijab, physical, social, and all of that is, is a big discussion to have. But when we say social hijab, obviously there are kind of the, the obvious ones in terms of physical hijab. And most, like you said, Said, most people think of the hijab, a sister wears on their head. And, um, you know, even the Western world or the, the non-Muslim community will know hijab to be that. But social hijab is probably a bit more than that, right? It's, it's more than that. It's because it's not just about, like you said, uh, uh, having a hijab on the head. Yeah. So this is more, I think, of a male-female sort of conversation. Yeah. Let's, we're speaking here more, mostly to the males. We are indeed. Um, we're, we're very conscious that we are t we're two guys here. And when you mention two brothers, the H word, yeah. <laughs> it's game over. So that's not our goal, obviously. We want to be... We want to be fair and we want to be representative to, to, our, to our own, you know, to other brothers, especially over well. To the lads. We call them lads. Boys, yeah. And uh, in inshallah, you know, the, the, the social hijab has been very different. I can't speak for ladies. Mm. I just want to make that clear because I'm not in their shoes and I don't know exactly mm -hmm. what they face or what issues they have when it comes to social hijab or digital hijab, as you've mentioned. But as for us guys, I think it's mainly got to do with... Either how do we interact with the opposite gender, be it at work, be it at school, be it at university, or be it out, you know, even go to the supermarkets. Sometimes you have to deal with a cashier or sometimes, you know, you have these certain environments and scenarios which are not comfortable for everyone, but some yeah. people enjoy them. Uh, at the same time, I think it's more important to say that social hijab, it's more about how you conduct yourself or how you uh, represent yourself as a Muslim. So yeah. it's more than just how you look. So I think it's about more about what is your intention, because a lot of people, they when, when when we just say social hijab, they just see you know how is he acting, yeah, you know has he lowered his gaze, you know all all of these things. Because I think more important, a bigger bigger factor is the individual himself and what his intention is. I think that's a very fair analysis to be honest. And and what you mentioned, Said, is is fascinating to me, especially mm. about the way you carry yourself, because you know you always hear in in uh in conversation about the confidence that confidence breeds success and all sorts all sorts of different terminologies phrases and ideologies which root from the, the the soul of confidence if that makes sense mm -hmm. um and for men confidence is a big deal your masculinity a lot of the time is found in the way you carry yourself yeah and masculinity in my opinion shouldn't be then defined about the results you have with the opposite agenda and the success you have you know when when interacting with them as well because unfortunately we live now in a world where you're watching tv you're watching a film or you're playing a game there is always a cool character for example who who has a like you know who wins the girl of his dreams hmm. or something like that um, or even who's just like got this, especially like in, you know, these, there are films where you've got like a, a guy wearing a leather jacket, for example, when he's smoking and a girl walks past and he says something slightly degrading or that whole concept of social hijab is something we've now overlooked because we've become so accustomed to behavior towards the opposite gender, mm -hmm. in, especially in the Western world where we don't think twice about it. So sometimes we may carry ourselves in a way which isn't really appropriate. That, Do you see what I mean? That, that, that's very true because, you know, sometimes when I'm out and about, uh, whether I'm going to work or whatever it is, it's very different to how I am uh, when I'm in, for example, the Middle East. Mm. Because you've got a different environment, you've got uh, diff different, shall I say, you, you can be placed in different scenarios, even though they might be very similar. Yeah. But because there is already the concept of hijab already in that country, being a majority Muslim country, we don't really think about these things twice. So it's like you're already programmed to normally act a certain way. I'm not saying you put an act on, yeah. but this is how you are in true nature. But being here in the West, you've sort of, your body's sort of reprogrammed to how the West is, you know? And we're trying to, I think, find where the line is and not crossing that line. I, I, of course. I, 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 I don't have much experiences to share. But for me, I can say um, where I face obstacles sometimes was only when I was at school. Mm. So beyond beyond that, you know, at the workplace, alhamdulillah, you can choose what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go out, you can choose what to do. But I only had that, you know, the the I, I wouldn't call them interactions. Mm. I will call them part of your studies. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to you have to interact and speak with the opposite gender, and that's as far as it went. Yani, but I know from the brothers and the friends that I have. There's a bigger story to this. There is, 100%. And to be honest, this, like, like you said, the, the goal of this conversation primarily is to discuss 
the role of men in the mm. discussion of social hijab and then obviously mm. we'll talk about digital hijab and this is of course to all the brothers out there that we need to be taking this seriously we we have to be conscious and we mentioned masculinity as a point masculinity is goes hand in hand with modesty there's nothing to be ashamed of and especially when it comes to hijab mm. we have to take more of responsibility to be careful about who we look at and and how we're looking and so on because we are aware that the concept of a first glance exists yeah okay we accept that like yes. as a, as a man and even as a woman i'm sure the first glance at the opposite gender is something that will happen even if it's completely unintentional but we know of course that the second the second glance onwards is not allowed yeah, that, that, that's where the danger begins yes because you know like you said uh the first glance that's when you know that's when you lower your gaze that's mm. That's when you put your head down and continue your normal day-to-day -day life. Best, there are people who don't lower their gaze. Mm. And I think this is where the danger all, all happens. those who because extend the loophole on two-minute first glimpses. Yeah, where they yeah. say prolong it as long as you want. Yeah, I, yeah. I've had stories like this. Not sure if they're true, by the way. <laughs> Best, I've, had, <laughs> I've had a lot of things when it comes to that. Best, I, I think that the, the danger really lies is what you do next. Correct. Because, okay, you speaking about lowering the gaze. If you didn't lower the gaze... Yeah. If you're still looking, uh, that means you're going to go to step two. That step two could be maybe smiling, could be maybe saying hi, and then it becomes very harder to say goodbye. And you know, all of these things, this is how they begin. Small, small steps. Because I think it's all avoidable. Like if, it is, if, 100%. It, it's, it's all avoid avoidable because Islam is saying you lower your gaze. You lower your gaze, you won't have this problem. It's avoidable, but it's hard. It's we know hard. that as men. And we hard. know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Surah al Nur. Uh, verse number 30 Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Tell the believing men to cast down their looks And guard their private parts For that is pure for them Surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Is well acquainted with what they do I think that should be a stark reminder to us To be honest That mm. we are living in uh, reality And even if we are alone We're driving We are walking past someone Like you said in a supermarket We're at work Or even at school or university I think it's, it doesn't just apply to to, to adults. Yeah. I think even yeah. if you're young and even you're balik, <laughs> like it's a thing we have to be aware of, that um, Allah subhanahu wa taala is watching us all times. Mm. And although it is unavoidable, and it is difficult, it is achievable. And I think once you go on that journey to, in some ways, try to self purify and and resist, it becomes easier over time. Mm. Would you reckon? I, I, I believe it becomes easier for those who are married. Yeah, 100%. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> we were talking about this earlier. Yeah, we spoke on the phone just before the podcast. Yeah. Uh, just to gather each other's thoughts. And we both agreed that marriage sort of helps you stay away from having, you know, all this sins. Let's call them sins because they are what they are. They you are. Know, Islam saying it's a sin, it's a sin at the end of the day. And uh, the only way I think to prevent, you know, having any or falling into the ca category of sins is getting married at a young age and i think getting married at a young age helps you first of all from mm. avoiding such scenarios because you're too busy being with your wife vice versa as well i'm pretty sure 100 percent, absolutely so now obviously i know we've spoken off camera in the past and on, on whatsapp we've shared like kind of opinions on this but i'm getting we worried now, sorry i'm getting worried yeah here we go <laughs> this is the time where i expose you so this is where we've had the private conversation <laughs> and now it's public no, no, I'm no, I'm no, <laughs> <laughs> there's no there's no but nothing to expose alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. this is good news no uh in the sense that we've we've, we've shared opinions with each other about the state of the digital world when it comes to hijab and mm. for those who kind of are aware of of um not just aware of social media because everyone's aware of social media but aware of the changing trends in social media you will come to realize that the social media platforms and and algorithms in social media will boost and promote uh, kind of content which in many ways contradicts islamic values yes. so for example things which are likable and clickable and viral are things which sometimes are uh, immoral or sometimes things which are so shocking to the human eye that they can't take their eyes off it mm. and a lot of the time that falls into the category of things which aren't good to look at on social media yeah. and things which are um easily accessible would you reckon i i believe it that what you have just said is something that uh, even though we spoke briefly about it on the phone i'm thinking of it right now yeah and you're very right because when i first started off on uh, instagram i can remember i was like you get to see what other people like 
Mm. You get to see what who who followed who, and it used to always give you like this. So you always sort of you know. Oh, back in the day. Yeah, this the is activity, like I think when Instagram yeah, first started. Two thousand fourteen or not, something. Not sure yeah. of the year. Yeah. But that was pretty much it, and then things changed. Next thing there was this like explore page. And then now you're open to a complete different world. Yeah. So you're no longer seeing what you and your community are up to. Now you're seeing what the world is up to. And the mm. world is in a complete mess. I, even now, uh, I don't want to promote the platform. But uh, by a year ago, I opened TikTok. Yeah. See what's all about. And I was scared to open the app. Because mm. whenever I opened the app, things that are inappropriate would just pop up. And yeah. it, it just happens. But alhamdulillah, the algorithm has improved. And I only see what I want to see. But... Uh, this is what people are seeing in their day-to-day lives. Yeah, it's it's worrying as well because that content sometimes is forced upon you and you mm. can't do anything about it. And you have, at least for example on, I, w- I don't want to say at least, but there are social media platforms where you will see what you what you choose to see. Mm. For example, mm. you can control who you follow or what friends you have on, on the app and so on. But of course, there are apps like TikTok. Uh, follow us on TikTok. After my podcast, <laughs> yes. Um, no, but there are apps like TikTok, of course, which um, which which are which you know pose the same threat, and not just the content we see on TikTok, but also the people and the way they behave on TikTok, and particularly we're talking about Muslims here. Yeah, see, I I have a lot to say, but I'm scared that I might La sound bismillah. like I might I might sound like someone who just judges people. No, no we're not best, judging. This best is, in all honesty, if you've yeah. put yourself out there. It's your fault. You're there at to the be end, judged. At the end of the day, yeah. yeah the, the, the things we see, our own brothers, sisters, you know how they, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's called trends now. Like yeah. people do some ridiculous things. I don't know if it's for the views or whatnot. For the sake of becoming viral. For the sake of becoming viral, but it's 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 it's, it's destroyed social hijab completely. There's mm. there's like if there if there ever was a curtain, maybe two three years ago there was a partial curtain. Now there's just like. It's open for everyone. Course, Before yeah. I, re- I remember like the majority of accounts were like private accounts. Yeah. So you couldn't really follow anyone or no one could follow you. But now, who, I mean, everyone? I'll be honest with you. Say I've I've downloaded TikTok mm. in the last month or so because of obviously the podcast. After Maghrib, yes. And uh, because of another thing I'm involved with for work, mm. um, f- for that for that organization or that that company page as well. I have a TikTok account, but I, I personally, I haven't, thank God, like I, I don't see the point of it. I haven't got into it. Like it doesn't really intrigue me. But from what I have seen, there is all sorts of content on there. And it's not just TikTok, by the way. It's also Instagram. I think there's a, a big, tr- there's a big culture within our community and just, you know, it's very much infiltrated by wider society. So for example, um, I think I mentioned this to you. There's a culture for men and boys to go on lads' holidays yes. and post pictures, for example, wearing vests mm. or shorts mm. or wearing, you know, LA Lakers basketball tops. Yes. You know what I mean? And by tops, I mean vests, yeah. right? That kind of thing, in my opinion, is wrong. Is yeah, it's not permitted. It's not allowed. It's it's wrong, I think, because see, we're not scholars. Let's just yeah, hundred uh, percent. So I I I I don't want to speak as if I'm speaking on behalf. Of the religion of Islam, or you know, making my own fiqh rulings, but I believe it, it, it's it's the start of what becomes even. So if if you're willing to show yourself in a vest, yeah, you know, if you're willing to show yourself, I don't know, in, in shorts and all of that online, posting it, being happy about it, it's only going to lead to even worse things. Mm. Because next time you're more than happy to maybe now take off that vest, yeah, and post a picture, which is a big thing in the UK. It is a big thing. I, like I'm, I'm not judging anyone. Honest mm. to God. This, I, this is this is like you are sowing your own seeds, and then you're gonna reap what you sowed. So if 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 I'm not talking about you directly, I'm talking about the future community, the future generation. But it could be your children, it could be your kids, it could be your nieces, your nephews, whoever they are. They're gonna look up to you, mm. and they're gonna see Amu X or Khalo X is doing this. Correct. What's he gonna tell them? He's gonna tell them it's normal. My phone is ringing, by the way. <laughs> I should have put on silent. Yeah, all good. But I think at the, at the same time, said as well. Yeah. It also puts someone, and the reason why I'm against it mm. is I think when you've gone through, um, a, let's be real, like I'm definitely not um, infallible by, by any means. I'm not a, not a great example to many. But one thing I do know is that I have, I have changed a lot in, yeah. on a personal capacity over the last ten years or so, and Alhamdulillah, I've I've I think I've, I'm at a stage now where I have more conscious consciousness 
over my digital presence and my my um my kind of this the circle I keep and so on online. And a big part of it is when you post pictures which are maybe um, not appropriate from a fiqh perspective or even mm. just a mor moral perspective, mm. Mm. you are putting yourself at risk of being interacted with and interacting with others. So for example, you post a good looking picture in the gym or as a guy, you post a good looking picture in um, a selfie mirror or mirror, mm. mirror selfie or something like that or whatever mm. it is. These things are very common. And, you know, I follow hundreds of guys, many of them probably going to rinse me after this, mm. but I follow so many people and I, I scroll past this once a day. And, you know, a lot of the time they're good people. We know brothers and sisters, especially brothers within the community who we interact with, who we pray with, who we study with and so on. Yeah. But these things, in my opinion, are one level too far mm. and it puts them at risk of mm. being DM'd by a girl or being uh, judged by their own community, which is obviously at detriment to their own reputation. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not a fan. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to say what they're doing is haram. Okay. Uh, I, I, I don't think there's a sin in taking a selfie in a mirror, for example. No, I might not. be joking now. We're jo yeah, I'm joking yeah. about this now. This, this in, uh, because at, at the end of the day, I think is the intention, like, Mm. Now, if you're posting topless photos, that's between you and God right now. It's it's not it's not right. I'm not gonna talk about that. Yeah, that's, yeah. You know, there's certain people that they are on holiday. They show they have a good time. They, you know, they they're in the beach. They're showing yeah. off their biceps. Whatever it is all of this is gonna lead to something you're gonna regret, and th that you could be the fault of someone from the opposite gender saying, "Oh, look at his biceps," mm. or for she might share it to her friend and say, "Ha, oh, I just saw this guy on the east the beach having fun in Dubai, for example." Mm. I mentioned Dubai because it's known for beaches. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> common destination. Common destination for many of our brothers because yeah. you know, Muslim country, halal food, all of that. It's got that environment, yeah. um, but doesn't have doesn't have any spiritual spirituality. <laughs> I must say, uh, I've never been. I'll be honest. I've been a few times. I've never been, and uh, some say I'm lucky. So I think you're missing out. Best you'd rather go to Ziara destination. Uh, I, I guarantee Shalom. you that. So I, I don't feel like it's them saying, hey, look at me. Mm. You know, here's my biceps. I, it's, it's, it's happening indirectly because it's become normal. Yeah. Now, five, this six years ago, had 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 someone who's put a picture of his. What were they called? What was that team? LA, what were they called? Uh, Lakers. Lakers. I, don't ask me. It's a yellow color, orange color. I don't fan know. And that's about as far as it goes. Yeah, let's just say Lakers so, for, yeah. for, for name's sake. <laughs> I don't think five years ago, six years ago, they would have uploaded a photo of them wearing the vest on the beach, for example. Because it wasn't normal. Okay. It wasn't, now it's normal. Right. Now, now we have... You mean in a fashion sense or... Normal to Muslims, right? I see. Okay, you know, and it, that what, I'm, what, what I said earlier on, I was like, if we had the curtain, then there was like this partial curtain, and now the curtain is just wide open, uh, wide open, and it's become normal. And a lot of it, I believe, this is my personal, from things I see, I think it's down to the parents. Mm. Yeah, and he, yeah, we spoke on the phone. I didn't mention this part, but because I don't want to be judgmental and say it's your mom or dad's fault, but I think a lot of it plays. With your parents, I mean, we I, I know parents uh, who are amazing people, God fearing people. You know, they they raise their kids in such an amazing way. But when it comes to things like this with their sons, they don't get involved. Mm. Like if my sons interacting with the opposite gender on social media, none of my business. None of my business. If my son's going out to a shisha cafe and is mixed with females, none of my business. What's the, what's the reasoning? Yikbar, yikbar. It's a wajahan. So he'll grow out of this. And get married. He'll get married and he'll stop eventually. Yeah. yeah. This is the mentality they have. Do you think that's cultural? Do you think culture plays a part in that? I interest. It may depending on where you are from, mm. because uh I'm I'm speaking on behalf of Iraqis. Mm. Yeah, and it depends where you are from Iraq. Some things are normal, some things are not normal. Best uh the parents themselves know that this is not right. Mm. And they're not saying anything about it. I like know I'm, people I'm, like I'm, I'm saying this because yeah, no, I, I have right, friends right. of parents I've, who really don't care I've heard so many stories like this as well and to be honest I've heard that obviously within certain communities um, parents will, will, will judge their daughters with more harshness mm. than their sons and mm. they'll say the sons will get married they'll grow out of it and they'll mature mm. women the girls our, our daughters they get mature younger they should be doing the right thing otherwise no guy will want to marry them yeah. But guys, it's okay. No, that's unacceptable. Entirely yeah, no. unacceptable. And I'm sure 
to be honest, inshallah, you know, a lot of a lot of the the younger parents today, you know, will will have a different mindset when it comes to this, and a lot of us have grown up in this society. Mm. Um, I mean, and, and and not that makes a difference, but you'll have more of an understanding of the equality and equity between men and women in the day and age we live in now, compared to obviously in different parts of the world where our uh, forefathers were. But a big part of the said as well is um, not just posting content, but engaging in engaging, stuff yeah. do you see what i mean mm. the kind of behind the scenes as well because it's very easy on snapchat to reply to a story for example just as an example um you're in school and a, a sister posts something about like i don't know her class or uh, you know how much they hate maths homework <laughs> it's very easy as a guy yeah. to say oh i'm gonna reply to her we're talking about homework. It's halal. Yes. She's what I mean. She's yeah, a classmate. Yeah. We're strictly acquaintances. And th that's the scary thing because yeah. if if it's if it's when I say is it normal? Of course, it's normal to tell your friends that I'm doing homework or whatnot. Yeah. But the fact that it's public, that means the opposite gender seeing this, mm. and the opposite gender, you know, maybe he doesn't have any wrong intentions. Right. But that's the beginning of something, because that. Th that pure intention, let's say, can change. Shaitan exists. We all know Satan is here. He's whispering, whether you believe it or not. Mm. Some people you guys can hear the seagulls outside. I can hear the seagulls. Yeah, Maybe I don't, they, I don't, I don't think they liked Satan yeah. when yeah. I said his name. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're not on the beach, by the way. In case we're not, we're not, not, not on the beach in Dubai. <laughs> not on the beach in Dubai. Yeah. But but when when she is posting that story on Snapchat, let's yeah. say, and her account is open to everyone. Yeah. You know. I, I, but I don't know how the privacy settings work on, on Snapchat. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure where it is now. Like I was, I was a big Snapchat user back in the day. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, but I, I, I know it's changed now. Yeah. And now you can have anyone add you. I think it recommends you other people. It does. And it this does. is where the danger happens. Is that friends you've, and you've uploaded a story of you doing your homework. It's something so innocent. Yeah. And it's just for you and your friends. But because your account is not public, your account is not private. Sorry. What happens? Someone mm. gets recommended. Your Snapchat gets shared, yeah, and then L O L. It's just those three letters. Lol, good luck, you know, blah it blah starts. blah, and that's where it begins. Yeah, I think as well as that, it's 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 we have to remember that resisting the that we can go on for ages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's yeah. so many examples, cases. You talked about shisha cafes, which I really wanted to to talk about. Um, let's talk. You know what? Let's talk about shisha cafes. Yeah. Because let's talk about it. Let's be real. First thing yeah. I'm gonna say. Is that n <laughs> none of us? We're not endorsing shisha smoking. Uh, we're not endorsing it. Yes. But at the same time, it's a huge culture existing within our generation, yeah. our friend circles. Yes. So you know, we're 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 you know, it's something we see a lot of, and um, like I'm I'm gonna say uh, like out you know up front, I have I've been um, uh, in an environment where people are smoking shisha as well, and it's very easy to be in an environment and to come across the wrong sort of people or mm. to be put in a, put at risk of, for example, in, engaging with the opposite agenda. You could be, for example, um, smoking shisha and you're with your boys and you're strictly having a halal discussion and a sister walks in or a number of sisters or, you know, whatever it is and someone catches your eye. Now, the question is not, oh, what are you saying? I can't accidentally see a sister. I'm speaking to brothers. And, no, the point is, is are you in the position or are you in a place which is putting you at risk of doing an act of haram? Mm. If you're in an environment like that, you shouldn't be there in the first place. If it's going to give you the risk of it, do you see what I'm saying? So we're talking. Obviously, we're going back to the physical point yeah. of hijab instead of digital. But for example, if you're in a place where music is playing, alcohol is served, and it's a very, very mixed and very young and youthful urban environment, you're going to come across people who you wouldn't for be sure. comfortable. You wouldn't, for example, be happy if your brother married a sister. Like that, or your sister married a guy like that. Do you see what I mean? You'd rather be in an environment or a setting, obviously where you're not smoking shisha as an ideal, um, but where you are have, having that healthy discussion. But you know, sit with your friends after maghrib, have chai, and relax. I mean, do you see what I mean? Sit with your friends and listen to after maghrib. Uh, listen to after maghrib. <laughs> and the, what I think what we're trying to say, brothers and sisters at home, is that concept of putting yourself, even if you're not intending to do haram but you're physically entering a zone where you might be at risk of it, it's the same. Mm. It's the same as entering a zone of social media yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're putting yourself at risk and you f content is forced on you, even if you don't volunteer that information upon yourself. And, you know, at times you have, you're forced to interact with it. Yeah, but I, I mean, speaking about Shisha Cafes. Yeah. And uh, but, but all, all the points you just mentioned, like it's, 
it's, it's something I think not just me and you agree with. I think everyone listening to this podcast can agree with, mm -hmm. because I think everyone has experienced this. Yeah. Um, you know, you you go to, again, I'm not, uh, you know, promoting any tobacco companies out here, but yeah. like you said, it's in the culture. Yeah. yeah. You, you, whether it's good or bad, it's happening. People are going shisha cafes. And I, I I used to be someone that used to go quite often. Let's, yeah. Uh, let me say as it is. Got married, things changed, stopped. Alhamdulillah. Um, spend more time at home, away from any shisha smoking. Yeah. But back in the day, for us, what was as a halal environment to us was going out with the boys. Correct. Sitting down, talking, having tea, smoking yes. shisha. Yes, correct. Yeah. And the be the beautiful thing about it back in the day is it's not like we were just going out having fun. Mm. It was like we would actually go and have like meaningful discussions. Yeah, hundred percent. Honest to God, like we will you, discuss it would, religion. It'd be substantial. We will, it, yeah, like that. Will, that's what was the most enjoyable thing about shisha cafes. Yeah, At, back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Now I do not want to stop step foot in any of them because now I can't tell the difference. Between realistically, a between a club and a shisha cafe. Yeah, things have changed. Why? Because of digital hijab. Mm. Social media. When they start promoting all these businesses, all these new amazing shisha places and venues, people like I know brothers used to say, "Let's go to this cafe because it's quiet." Yeah, and then also new brothers who said, "Let's go to this cafe because it's loud." So there was that mix. Yeah. So you, 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 you I guess you, you know who to chill with. Yeah. But. When social it media tells you a lot about when digital, it tells you a lot that be yeah. why because they're watching this on social media, they're saying they're seeing this like false sense of freedom where mm. I can go enjoy myself with the lads and the excuse of I'm out with the boys, yeah, but they're in a haram environment. Mm. It is what it is. It's a haram environment, and then you have other brothers. No, they choose to go to a different shisha cafe based on you know there isn't. I've been cafes where there's no girls. Yeah, of course. And it's amazing. Of course, of course, of course. Because you can literally sit down and be comfortable being who you are. Now, when you want to go to these other shisha venues, okay, let's say you're out with the boys. A lot of places that you go to that have these, shall I say, uh, I don't know what they're called, dance floors. I have no idea. With DJs yeah, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, bro, I'm mentioning this because I know people from the community, my own friends, some of, of them. They go to these places and they have to dress up. Why? Because... Opposite genders there, of course. Mm. Okay, they 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 have to go on a specific day. Why? Because that's when it's most busy, mixed with mm. the opposite gender, and they see this online, digital, digitally. Correct. Then they go there physically. Yes, so yeah. uh, it's it's connected. It is. It's all connected, to be honest. Said, and and at the same time, it's there's a like you said, there's a risk that we will see something on social media. Mm will perceive a situation to be an amazing Because it looks normal. Because it looks, yeah. And the 99% of yeah. these venues, by the way, I'm not just talking about shisha cafes. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Muslim entertainment businesses in general yeah. are run by Muslims. Correct, yeah, of course. Yeah. And if, as a Muslim, I'm seeing a Muslim business promoting something like this, I think it's normal. Mm. It becomes normal. It becomes normal. It yeah. becomes normal, yeah. Like and we've become very accustomed to uh to giving up and putting mm. or, or just you know putting aside our responsibilities with with hijab and i'm going to say to be honest i, I know we, we're specifically talking to to the brothers yeah but obviously the same will go for the sisters as well and being conscious of where you go and who you're with and who might be there and the sort of people you'll come across and we don't want to get too much into the sisters conversation um because there's a whole wealth alhamdulillah of content out there most of <laughs> most of it by brothers but i'm sure there's obviously sisters out there as well who can talk to talk about things but from a brother's perspective mm. a good guy should not be in an environment like that yeah do you, you see what i'm saying you know a guy who sorry sorry sir, i'm just gonna finish this I, point no, I, I i yeah you carry you on but i don't want to forget the point i was gonna mention because you mentioned bismillah like, go, for no, it, no, go for it i'm gonna say it yeah bismillah. sorry i interject I, I just interjected no no not at all what i want to say is that whoever's going to shisha cafes is not a bad person yes okay yeah, it doesn't they, mean they're, they're not a bad, bad person. person i remember my mom she just told me ali where are you going mom i'm going here where is here I'm going to a shisha cafe yeah okay but but the majority of the time wherever i was going was going to a shisha cafe right with amazing brothers with amazing discussions. 100%. Just having a good time. Good time in terms of talking, getting, getting, getting to see what's going on, what's the latest. 
you have friends at the end of the day and you need that social bubble that needs to exist. But my mom used to say, why are you going there? Like, you shouldn't be going there. And I used to tell her, mama, where do I go with the Shabab? There's nothing else for me this as a Shia, yes, as a yes, Muslim, yes, yes. to be in an environment where I can enjoy, you know. So this is probably the biggest argument in favor of it because everyone say you'd rather be there than be at a club. Yeah. We'd rather our youth are together talking about real life issues in a sh as long if there's a pot of shisha there who cares I should thought my mom was rather shisha than drugs yeah, yeah I yeah, know yeah. people who take drugs and, and I'll be honest I'm having shisha to be honest mm. in that sense like you said a lot of people a lot of our generation has stayed away from environments like these bad environments like clubs mm. or out on the streets and um, doing whatever they're doing and it's better that they're with their community obviously uh, the next step for our generation is to talk about how to phase away from shisha or anything which is harmful to your health or could be considered haram depending mm. on who you follow and so on mm. and then to phase that into a healthy conversation where you don't need to rely on the presence of a, sh of a, a pipe basically yeah. do you know what I mean but um, the w what I was quickly going to say earlier was about um, like you said not everyone who goes is a bad person at, at all at all, we always give better. And I didn't say that because I've been to shisha cafes. No, 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 of course. <laughs> it's, it's a rule, <laughs> yeah. 100%. And me as well, to be honest. I know scholars that go shisha cafes. That's what yeah, I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think we all do. I'm However, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I will say that obviously it's it's a culture that we mm. should grow out of. And of course, it's it's about the, the sort of places you go. If it's a very mixed environment, if there is loud music, it's not ideal. Yeah. And the same thing, again, we apply it back to the conversation we had about digital hijab. There, is, there are communities that build on social media, whether it's uh, group chats, whether it's Twitter spaces, or whether it's Instagram groups, or whatever it is, where opposite genders, even people who don't know each other, they're added to a group, they're talking to each other. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? And it's very easy to follow someone and they follow you back and discreetly you like their picture like two weeks later and they like yours back a week. Do you see what I mean? And before you know it, they reply to a story and then six months later, you're speaking every day. Mm. Six months after that, you meet up. Six mm. months after that, you tell your parents. It's very easy for things to move, and then you know it, there's a risk of things moving too fast, and you get caught in the trap of saying something haram, yeah. and you regret it uh, for years to come. Mm. And then, unfortunately, these these things will spill into your 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 life as an adult. Do you see what I mean? The guilt, the pressure, the responsibility you then have to your wife, to your kids. You will feel guilty because the years where you should have been at prime spirituality when you're unmarried and you've got the most to resist. And that is your chance to become a real man. Mm. At that age, if you're polluting your mind, your heart and your soul with images which are not correct or, for example, interaction which is not correct, then we are at risk of jeopardizing our, our future. And of course, it's very important for us to then get back on track. It is. And I, I think one point is important to mention uh, for, for some it can be tricky because it's family um, but there are families out there where hijab doesn't exist yeah there's no such thing as hijab and uh, I, I don't know if it's a big thing we're gonna mention and now we're gonna mention yeah <laughs> possibly because I think it's important yeah because you know this this starts at home yeah and someone as I said sometimes parents just don't care and don't talk about it to their sons about it. But if if you if it's happening at home, mm. it's gonna happen outside. Mm. Okay, uh, hundred percent. And if the parents are fine with it, say be 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 transparent. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm, when you say it's happening I'm at home, how can about, you be okay? I'm at home you're with mahrams. Uh, yeah, but sometimes there's cousins, cousins, right. and cousins. Okay. Uh, in laws, you know how it is. Uh, in laws, relatives, yeah. family, friends, all sorts. Uh, intermarriage relatives and cousins. Yeah, there's no such thing as hijab. Mm. Alhamdulillah, in our communities, it sort of exists. Yeah, but I've been in different communities where I've seen it. Just, I I don't know where I am. Uh, am I in the right home? Uh, did I visit the right place? No offense to them, they're amazing people. Mm. The homes I visit, everyone's amazing. By the way, Alhamdulillah. But sometimes I'm like, okay, wait, you're not. Uh, you know, you're not mahram. Why are you guys all laughing? Why are you guys all shaking hands? Why are you guys all doing? It just didn't make sense to me. Yeah, and if that's happening at home and the parents are fine with it, I don't know what the future holds. So, what I am trying to say, and let me be clear, yeah, is that um, what we are seeing in this day and age, we didn't used to see before. We're seeing, yeah, families who have no issues with you know, 
I'm not talking about immediate family. I'm talking about extended family. Mm. They have no assurance if they're going to go out, their sons and their daughters and their nieces and their nephews. And they're all balik, by the way. Mm. Some are even married, by the way. They don't mind them mixing, going bowling, going cinemas together, going holidays together. Okay, and there is say, no um, such... Sorry, yeah. No, nah, sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Oh, I don't there's, 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 there's no, no barriers. There's no boundaries. Yeah. There's, 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 it's like, what's their excuse? We grew up together. Right. Or I see them like a sister. Or I see him like a brother. And this is dangerous. I, I Look, I'll be honest. I agree with you. There's a couple of things I, I, I do disagree with. Mm. The first is that when you said it's, it's, it exists, it didn't exist before. I think it has existed. I think it was in some ways, mm. it was at least speaking from behalf of the South Asian community, Pakistanis, Indians, even Khojas, pre-Islamic Revolution 1979, a lot of my community didn't even used to wear hijab in terms of the sisters. It's the first thing to know. So... The concept of social hijab was even further distant, if you see what I mean. Okay, yeah. Adab and mm. akhlaq and all these things have always existed, but as a cultural thing. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So, like lowering gaze and so on was there out of respect. In the same way you see, like, for example, in the Far Eastern communities in Korea and so on, they will bow and so on, but as a term of respect, as, a, as opposed to a religious ruling. Yeah. Now, in today's day and age, where... On one side, you've got families in our community who are doing things on a, what, what some people would call conservatively in the sense they wear their hijab, they'll lower their gaze, they won't shake hands no matter how long they've been uh, related to or acquainted with each other, for example. And then obviously you've got other families uh, who uh, are more more liberal in that sense. And to be fair, like most families, you have a mix of both. Mm. So you have members of your family which are really chill and they're happy, for example... You know, like if I have an auntie who's maybe f like 20, 20 years older than me. So when I was mm. born, for example, she was mm. 20 years old. By the time I'm 20 years old, she's 40 years old. Yeah. In her mind, I'm a baby. She used to babysit me and yada, yada, yada. But in my mind, by the time I'm 20 years old, I'm balik. I consider myself a man of marriageable age and so on. And she's still young enough mm. to, in the sense that she's still young enough to not be considered an old auntie. Do you get me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there, there comes an awkward position mm. there. Mm. And I've been in that position as a mm. guy, and I'm sure there have been sisters as well who have been in that same position. Um, but that's a really important thing to mention. But generally speaking, it's not good in the South Asian community. It's very, um, uh, very liberal in that sense. Um, and like we for need example, more conservatives. Sorry, we need more conservatives. Yeah, but they call them well, close-minded. Yeah, yeah, and this is the thing. Like I'm, I'm cautious <laughs> of using the word conservative as well, especially because it's. If from an Islamic perspective, mm. it's not conservative. It's mm. it's doing what's haq. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're yeah. doing what's right, yeah. and the right thing is to to adhere to certain rulings. So, for example, I'm I'm not a fan of, um, like seeing non mahrams, who, for example, let's say you go to visit your friend's house, yeah, and his his wife. As this is cl clearly just like a complete hypothetical situation. Generic. But let's say you go to a friend's house. His wife is there, and she's wearing her hijab halfway, or she's wearing pajamas. Or whatever I'm not going to judge that That's the sister's decision to make mm. And you know She's married for example To, to a, a guy and, and that's between them But from a guy's perspective that's It's difficult. not really Yeah it's not I think that puts you in an awkward it's, Yeah it's position. not comfortable That's what I was going to say Because it's you not, don't want to tell them What you're doing Yeah You don't want to tell them Cover a little more But yeah. you don't want to offend them Yeah and I've, I, more, more so as well With men as well Like let's say for example Your wife has friends Who come over at home, you usually wear shorts and a t-shirt or trackies and a t-shirt. Mm. Put it. Like, why are you doing that? Like, wear long, wear a hoodie and wear uh, uh, trousers, like which are yeah. more respectable. Yeah. Wear socks. Like, it's no one's saying you can't be comfortable, mm. but just be conscious that you might make someone feel uncomfortable. Every environment is different. Yeah, of course. And yeah. uh, it, it, I don't want to go too much into it because yeah, I, 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 I think that cold. I, yeah. No, because I. I I don't want to blame the sisters. No, definitely uh, not. But there's there's responsibility on the sisters as there is on the men. Yeah. And we know the Holy Quran tells us, sorry to keep going, Said, that to the men lower the gaze and to the sisters remain modest. Mm. But it's it's both, to be honest. Yeah, it's both. So balanced. for the men, we remain modest as well and the sisters lower their gaze. And it's we live, like you said, in a world now where you can know everything about someone, mm. know their voice, know their face, know their favorite color, know their LinkedIn history, what they were doing 40 years ago. What school they studied at in 1925? Like, <laughs> do you see what I mean? Before even meeting them, you yeah. can know everything about them. Yeah. So it's very easy uh, on in this day and age to find information about anyone 
and then meet them and know everything and not them not knowing that you know all about them which in my mind is creepy yeah. it's a it's a creep move you shouldn't do that that is creepy it yeah, is yeah. creepy but it's it's reality and but you know, it's us who's putting it out there Ah, we sense. are the ones out there so maybe we're part of the problem yeah no, no of course <laughs> like volunteering that yeah. information yeah, yeah, yeah. is uh what's what we said earlier like the content you put out yes we talked about images mm. and we talked about interaction but also just generally being aware i think for us that the content we put out there in any form or even just a presence itself comes with challenges yeah I, I, ahmed i got a question for you mm. if that's okay you, you know i the way you're speaking with me and I know the people listening and watching this podcast, I, I think they get lots of value by what you're saying. But I think one thing is we haven't given them like a solution. Okay. Because I, I, I think we've raised a lot of, a lot of issues, 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 issues and issues, we're just issues, talking issues. about problems. I think yeah, it's only we, fair to let them know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And the light is there's a solution for every problem. Yeah. Maybe we should discuss about this we a should. little. Um, I have to say though, before we get into that, say mm. that I completely forgot this episode is mm. brought to you by the Awaited Co. Awaited Co. Awaited dot Co. is the website. This is very very fashionable. Not just the caps, but these amazing amazing hoodies. And I would love to have one. Yeah, me and too. And I heard, I heard that they've been gifted to us. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Allah <laughs> salli ala Allah 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 Allah. And of course, thank you to Awaited Co. This is. Merchandise, of course, in honor of Imam al-Mahdi, Allah, for the Sharif, for where I use and I, I, You know, I love Shia businesses like this yeah, because support your you own. are proud of saying I am a Shia. Alhamdulillah. By Alhamdulillah. you just having 313 awaited. Yeah. So. But back to obviously back to the topic. Yeah. And um, yeah, guys, before we, we move on, check out awaited.co. Their merchandise support the cause. Of course, they're growing really fast. Their stock is growing very fast. And they are supporters of the after Maghrib podcast and we're very grateful to them thank you but back to the conversation said you asked about solutions um i think there's a f there's a few things which come to mind and i'm going to try and bullet point them yes um because i know we're short on time number one is i think be conscious about the amount of time you spend on your phone from a digital perspective mm. um screen time is a big issue so a big issue people have with tiktok is that you can scroll endlessly and and you'd be on there for hours without realizing that's the first one. Mm. The second one I'd say is be conscious about the sort of interactions you're having with people and the way things might come across. You might use an emoji, which someone might interpret differently. Um, for example, if a sister sends you a smiley face, don't take it as flirting. Even if they are flirting, assume it's not and don't pursue it. Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? Mm. Leave it and, and, and just try and keep it. If, you are, if you're having to interact with someone, keep it civil, keep it halal and, and that's it. And don't give the opportunity to someone else to misinterpret you. Um, the third thing I'd say is be conscious about what you're following. So, for example, a lot of meme pages, yeah, a lot of meme pages, a lot of like lad pages without naming any brands, are all promoting uh, like like a culture which is bigger than the Islamic community and mm. uh, is inclusive of all communities in the West. And sometimes you'll come across things which you don't like or which, for example, don't click with your values as a Muslim. So those are three tips that I've got in terms of the digital side. Have you got anything to add? You. Well, you've you've nicely mentioned the digital side to digital yeah. hijab. It's a new terminology, and I like it. Mm. Digital hijab. But so I think something more important is the actual physical social hijab. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, w w w our discussion here is not, you know, us saying don't go out, don't have fun. Mm. We're just saying having fun in the right way. There and there are ways to enjoy your lads' night out sin free. It's simple, and yani you can choose where to go. You can choose the environments to be in. You can choose the friends to have. And that, I think, is very important. 100%. Uh, you know, I, I, I once read somewhere, choose your friends that remind you to say, hey, let's go. Arba'in ziyara. Yeah, mm. That's amazing. You know, I have friends, they'll always tell you, hey, let's go. Let's go bowling or let's go here. But then you have those friends. Ali, book your ticket. Let's go ziyara. Let's go ziyara. That's what you did earlier those, in the episode. Did no, I do Dubai, that? Go for Zara. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's why I'm blessed to have said Ali Radu is my friend and, and co host. Likewise, good likewise. Best, that, you just use that amazing word, the influence. influence it's that yeah. influence. That influence. If you look after, you know, your your intention, your influence, your friends and your environment, you can have as much Sorry. fun fun. By the way, people see scholars and things like that. They think they're not having fun. I promise you. And I guarantee you, they are having an amazing time. Yeah. Because they're doing it all. Sin free and within the premises of within the premises, yeah, 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 yeah. And there are ways to have fun. Yeah, and you, uh, 
you can wear your shorts just don't worry above your knees you can yeah, there's so much things yani, there's so many things yeah, yeah. Uh, for every problem there is a solution yeah I completely agree you can work on your body and you can be fit and healthy without having to show it off you can yeah. be you can do you can go out and have fun with your boys mm. as long as you're trying your best to not put yourself in a position where you're in, you might come across an awkward situation yeah, yeah. so I think these are all really good points I, yeah. I want to add a uh, last thing you said about com- company there's a, a, a saying um, I don't think it's a hadith Mm. But it's something we've grown up hearing a lot, um, uh, just generally, actually, which is uh, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I've never heard that. But oh, I you love have never it. heard that? No. I, f- I think about amazing. it all the time. SubhanAllah. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. It's such Yalla. an amazing concept about company. And obviously, you mm. think about the, your years. Everyone can map out a timeline in their mind of, <clears throat> in this stage of my life, I was at this place with these people. And when you think about it, like, who were the five people I was spending the most time with? And you think about the influence they have on you, how you speak. Are you swearing? Are you um, gossiping? Are you backbiting? Uh, where you look, are they encouraging you to, to watch something you shouldn't watch? Are they encouraging you to go somewhere where you can see something you shouldn't see, for example? Mm. And that whole concept is a big influence on us and obviously the steps we take and the decisions we make in our day-to-day life. And modesty in hijab is, is like you said, is 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 a, a very important thing and the physical and social hijab is come hand in hand. They go hand in hand, yeah. It goes hand in hand. Yeah. You can't you ha- can't have one without the other. Um and inshallah we, you know we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there will, there will come a time where we we are proud of our hijab and, and like inshallah we talked about the awaited but when when our awaited savior joins us he'll be proud inshallah of, of our Allah community Allah. And, and of the hijab we built. Inshallah inshallah and I, I really hope everyone listening to this podcast or watching it on TV or on YouTube wherever they are hearing this yes to inshallah take some value mm. that they can put into their own lives because i know there are brothers and sisters out there who face this on a day-to-day life Correct. at school yeah. at university at the workplace could be at home with their extended family wherever it is they have the issue of social and digital hijab there are ways and there are solutions there are there are and you're not alone like everyone's got everyone's had their own i think their challenges. own experiences their own challenges and people overcome these and I think the biggest answer to this, to overcome it, get married young. Yeah, yeah get married young. We are going to be releasing episodes at some point in the future about marriage, which I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for. Yes, Ahmed, I hear so, you uh, are the expert. No, no, stop. I've marriage. been married for a lot less, <laughs> lot less uh, time than you have seen. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, brothers and sisters, uh, I just want to say as well, this conversation is fascinating, but there's also a lot of content on Ahlul Bayt TV, documentaries, shows, interviews talking about hijab both in a physical and a social context so do check it out on the Ahlul Bayt TV YouTube page and I want to mention again if you are watching on the After Maghrib podcast page on YouTube please subscribe give us your feedback your comments I promise that we are trying our best Um, we're not perfect nothing we say represents the channel um, and it's only the the opinions we have at this point in time they may change they may progress and inshallah they'll improve sorry your own opinion. Yeah, my uh, my own opinion. <laughs> I don't even represent say. So if you have an opinion, you represent yourself. You have a problem, bring it up with me and me alone. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, but no, alhamdulillah, it's been good to have everyone uh, tuning in. We welcome your feedback and we look forward to seeing you next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. <laughs>